Good evening, good evening everyone. Um, Pastor Ivana here from Life Spring Assembly. So um, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Um, it is our usual light sessions, light Bible study sessions that we started a few um, weeks ago, but also um, as I've been speaking to you guys, I wanna make these sessions a lot more interactive. So I do hope um, that you guys will start, as time goes on, come and just share your um, share your testimonies with me, share your experiences with me. Um, and yeah, we're gonna see how we can continue to grow in the word of God, amen, and make it applicable um, to our everyday lives because we live in this world. We are not of this world, but we live in this world and it is important for us um, as young people in faith and that is either just just early on in your journey or um or you're just physically young in age um it is important for us to always come together and um share how we are experiencing um this world because people who have traveled that journey before us can then give us advice and support us um, as we continue to build our faith and our relationship with god amen so i am here um i'm live on instagram i'm so excited um, i have we finally um we've got another another device here at live spring assembly so yeah i am live on all three platforms this is so exciting um i'm here on um, periscope hi periscope at the top facebook there and yeah instagram here as well so um hi everybody this is an attempt to reach as many people as possible. Um, it is a, a season where the Holy Spirit so much desires to unveil um, the truth and reveal what is really going on in this world um, to those who are to find God and those who desire to find God, those who have been seeking either for a long time or those who have just kind of started thinking, mm, I wonder what this God thing is all about. The Holy Spirit is working so hard in this season um, so that we can all um, see the truth of what it is. Um, that is his job. He is the um, advocate who guides us through all truth. That is the um, that was what was told to us, promised to us by Jesus um, when he was leaving the disciples. So it is, it is true and the Holy Spirit is here and he desires to um, reveal all truth. Um, and I am one speaking um, in line with the desires of the Holy Spirit. I've, I've lent my vessel to God um, so that I may assist God in his um, quest that we may come to know him and we then desire to grow and fellowship with God and then return home to God. Um, amen. So I do hope that what I'm going to share with you guys tonight will bless you and it will inspire you and it will encourage you to um, start your journey with God um, or continue your journey. Amen. Um, but yeah, if you do have any questions, please do just yeah, drop your questions in. Um, you can either put them, post them live, um, and if I can't get to them whilst we're, whilst we're live, I will um, respond after, um, as and where I can, amen. Um, so yeah, please do contact us on any of our platforms on um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, yeah, drop us a message, drop us a DM, and we'll get back to you. Um, so, what am I here to talk about today? The fear of missing out. Um, quaintly abbreviated to FOMO. <laughs> um, quite an interesting abbreviation there, but we, we know it as the fear of missing out. It is that overwhelming um, sensation of fear that if we do not engage in a particular activity at a particular time we will become deficient and that's either deficient socially deficient financially um deficient in our relationships um <laughs> deficient even in our physical um like our, our physical status in terms of our um we might not eat <laughs> we might there might be something that we're really looking forward to eating and it's like if i don't go to this thing and i don't attend this thing i'm not going to get an opportunity um to actually taste this thing um and it is that fear 
of not engaging in that particular activity at that time that then drives us and not even drives us but pulls us away a lot of the time um, from actually living a life committed to God because we find ourselves trapped in that fear that the world has kind of built up around us to say well if you don't do this you're going to look like a loser you're going to be a social outcast you're going to be labeled as boring you're going to be labeled as um poor you're going to be like so many labels that the world and has created to um, separate and segregate within the human social structure um there's so many there's a class system a gone class system um in every nation in the world that will distinguish one type of person from another type of person so there's so many there's now this big drive to um attain a certain level of social stature um so that you can get invited to those kinds of parties you can eat that type of food you can meet that kind of guy you can meet that kind of girl um you can fulfill your wildest um dreams in terms of where you would live in the world what kinds of holidays you would go go on um and so everything is kind of pitched to promoting a particular ideal and then there is so many um, adverts avenues and opportunities that are presented to us that will then foster um those those desires and aspirations but also to um uh, support us in 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 achieving them but something i wanted to put to you guys today is are those things really what they seem? A lot of the time, I, and I guess this is from my own personal experience as well, because I don't, I don't like to talk for other people and I'd love for you guys to share your experiences with me as, as well. Tell me if that's completely wrong, completely out of the ballpark, what you've experienced and we'll review it. If not, I'm going to go with scripture and I'm going to go with my own experience, amen. Um, so, um, I know a lot of the time for myself, if I take a real hard look at the world, because you know, sometimes we'll say to ourselves, like, everything is fine. Yeah, the world, the world's okay. The world's fine. Um, just wish it was a little bit more like this, or I wish it was a little bit less like this. Um, but when we really assess the world that we live in and the lives that we have, can we genuinely say that the decisions we've made based on chasing dreams was fruitful? And in this world, you know, we, we tell ourselves, you know, no, in this world, we think that pop-ups are just for internet browsers. We literally just think, yep, yeah, the only time we're ever gonna see a pop-up is the internet browser. Guys, that's just a shadow of the reality. Pop-ups are littered across society. Um, those are, I say annoying, it's not nice because people create pop-ups for a reason, of course. Um, but pop-ups are those annoying things that disrupt our everyday lives to try and sell us something, to plant um, an idea about an ideal that you might be interested in um in the attempt that it might catch your attention and you would then use your resources to actually acquire um what is being presented to you the world is full of that absolutely full of it um <laughs> i i had my own personal pop-up i've got my own personal pop-ups guys the one example i'll give you the time when um and I'm sure some of you might have this as well. There's always just that random time when an ex will just decide to remember your phone number um, and then they just start messaging you going, oh, hi, babe, how are you? Hope you're all right. And I'm thinking, mm, we've not spoken in about two months. Where did you remember my number from? I'm a bit confused. And it's so funny because the time that they will then message you is probably the same day 
where you've seen a lot of like couples kind of ads there's been lots of stuff on like maybe youtube about love someone's posted about oh they just got married like it's so funny that everything that is now geared in your mind has been about and surrounding that whole relationship thing and then you'll just get your ex slide into your dms and asking like oh let's let, I don't know, reconcile, let's have a conversation, whatever it might be. And now your mind, it's like your heart is now soft. <laughs> it's softened a little bit uh, to entertaining that conversation. And all you need to do now is entertain that conversation. And then guess what? Boom, you're in an issue. You're in an issue. It's so easy. It's so easy. And even if it wasn't um, an ex, I will say for those people who <sighs> maybe you're maybe you're dating and you're just thinking oh you know i'm just trying to take this thing slow and then something will just happen something just that just rocks your boat a little bit and then it's then again that like maybe the person you're dating now is just seeming like extra attentive they've just all of a sudden they've just got free time <laughs> they've not had free time for about two weeks but all of a sudden they've got free time and now it's just like oh man i could really do with some some comfort right i could really do with a hug I could really do the soothing word and then it's like oh boom we've uh <laughs> we're now pregnant <laughs> so <laughs> so many things don't go to plan when um these little pop-ups come into our lives and the 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 purpose of these pop-ups and the end goal is one to distract us um from using our internal indicators and the internal indicators being the spirit um, in order to discern what is good what is bad when to do those things and when not to do those things um, so it distracts us from even hearing any of that internal and i spoke about it uh, last week the economy within means that we can't hear it anymore um, but also its goal is to make sure that we actually don't taste the kingdom of God. Um, now, something that I wanted to <clears throat> put to you guys um, about this, this world that we live in, it's not designed to furnish um, a menu that is, that is um, compatible to our spirit. And people say, oh, yeah, but there's churches and there's this and that. Yeah, there is. Um, and that's why God has a church. You know, that's why God desires a church within the people on the earth, because the world doesn't have God. Um, and if we really want to believe that this world caters to spiritual things, I want to just kind of put to you guys... And um, we'll ask the question, in, in the smoking, in the alcohol, in the drugs, in the sexual sin, how can God be in those things when those things are physical things? And God isn't in the physical, God is in the spirit. Where God dwells, isn't in those things that keep us focused on the outside. God is, um, God dwells within our spirit and manifests through our spirit. So those things that we get up to, those things that we do, God's not there. So we would be fooling ourselves if we tried to say <laughs> that, the pop-ups that entice us to these things it is god who has drawn us there or god is in those places that's not correct um god is spirit and god dwells in man he doesn't dwell here <laughs> in 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 a physical form um god is within um, so that is the only way that you can taste God. It is a spiritual experience. And this world does not cater to spiritual experiences. It caters to physical ones. Ones that you can taste, touch, um, hear um, and smell. Um, that is what this world 
makes us or helps us, influences us to focus on so that we do not look um, within and we do not tune ourselves to the voice that is within the Holy Spirit who um, helps us to discern the right way to go. Amen? Um, so that's, I guess, my opener <laughs> for tonight. Um, we, this world makes us feel like everything is so urgent and it empowers us to make decisions based on little information but great urgency. Um, almost like you just feel rushed and harassed into, into doing something. Everything is made so convenient um, and available for us to access. So the minute now we are told to just wait for something, listen, just wait and listen for instruction, I think it's like we just start twitching. And then what Pete has it, please feel free to question me on that one. Um, but from my experience, I've said this to people before, I find it difficult to wait five minutes for a bus. Um, <laughs> that's the reality I lived in. And the excuse I was given by the world is just, oh, you're a city girl. You know, city moves so fast, it's so fast paced. Um, and it is really fast paced and you get used to it being so fast paced to the point where you now struggle to slow down. And the minute you're told to slow down, it's like, it's also almost offensive. Um, it's actually almost offensive. Now the, I'm just looking for a scripture um, quickly in the book of Haggai. And this is where I was last week. And I was talking about building a house um, for God to dwell in. And um, I'm hoping you guys remember that scripture. But basically it's Haggai 1. Um, not to run, just... Um, Haggai chapter one, um, I'm just going to skip to verse five, which says, now this is what the Lord Almighty says, give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Now, I did read that scripture to you last week, and I'm, the reason I'm bringing it to you again is because if you really look at your life under honest scrutiny, you will really relate to that scripture. If we take a moment to look at the reality of the world around us, Are we even going to say there's like a 50-50 split? Can we even, even if we try to like manipulate the figures a little bit, could we even say that there's a 50-50 split of happiness to unhappiness or joy to depression uh, or wealth to poverty? Could we say, could we, could we, could we make a 50-50 split? Personally, I'd say no. Um, <laughs> again, someone could definitely try and come and argue that point with me um but from especially what has been magnified in this year of 2020 we've been trying this way of see hear touch feel for as long as civilization and when we now look at the result of civilization and to where that, that has gotten us, are we any better off? Are we doing well? Is it getting better? I personally say no. Many people, if again you're honest, will look at again what has been magnified in this last year of 2020 and we just keep sinking. Standards keep dropping and when i say standards dropping it means the threshold for what is um acceptable and i'm saying acceptable because it is 
not acceptable at all but um it's like we keep moving the um we keep moving the benchmark we keep moving the milestones and it's just like okay so mankind has now slipped to another new level of depravity and we're just going to accept it um so yeah we just move the level of what is now acceptable to a lower level and it's kind of like how low will we go before we realize as a collective unified that the approach that we have taken and um, the stand and the position that we have taken that we're okay isn't actually okay um i personally had enough of it i don't know about you guys but that's why i'm here i guess broaching the question because i personally think that the world is is sinking really far um fast and um i'm just here posting the question just wondering is anyone else felt that way too is anyone else woken up to that fact as well and just thought mm, do you know something needs to change because this world's only gonna get worse um unless people rise for real change and lasting change everything that this world kind of spouts out is um quick fixes and band-aids to kind of cover up problems and i'm even just going to use an example of a vaccine for coronavirus it doesn't make coronavirus go away it's just a vaccine um but hey you know everyone is happy to accept a vaccine over no virus um and i mean we've been doing it for centuries you know there's been there's been like what bird flu there's been mad cow disease there's been uh, what, swine flu there's been all, all manner of diseases um in this world and it's like we just accept them it's just like oh yeah it, we'll just make a vaccine we'll just put a plaster on it because as mankind we we actually don't have the skills or the power to actually rid these things from our existence but we're too proud to admit it and seek divine intervention um and seek it in the manner in which has been shown to us that we should seek divine intervention it's kind of like you'll get people who will just be like oh god save us but that if you look at scripture that, that that doesn't really work you know you can't to actually get a result it isn't just oh god save us um god hears the cry and god god works in a particular way in order to answer particular cries but people aren't diligent enough to actually understand and study these processes um and wait for them <laughs> pray for them and also be a part of that solution many people just want to sit there and cry and uh, then towards the end of their life say that god didn't do anything that's sad it's very sad and it's not accurate accurate and it's not consistent with scripture but so what i'm saying is i want i've come here today to just oh guys i just want us to take a real hard look at our lives you know i don't, I don't <laughs> um i, I kind of wanted to come on here and just like rattle some cages because to be honest my cage has been rattled i look at the world and i just see a lot of darkness and my desire is that i really want people to be happy i really don't want people as young as and i've heard so it's so tragic it really it, it it hurts my heart you know when people as young as what 12 13 14 will be like oh yeah i've had i'm depressed i'm on medication i'm considering suicide and i'm like what i'm like what evil is in this world that will drive a young person who's barely seen time in this world to feel like there's no hope that's so sad and i just kind of 
I wonder when mankind will just wake up, wake up and just accept help. And I guess I'll relate to those people who even I'm, I, I wasn't, the, I really wasn't the best at it. Um, and I have friends who I've spoken to about this as well. They struggle, they struggle, they struggle until they hit rock bottom and then they reach out for help. And I'm just like, is that really the human condition? Are we, are we literally doomed to wait till we've literally hit rock bottom and there is no way out before as a collective, and I don't, well, even scripture says it's not going to be a collective, to be honest. But that group, anyway, of people will rise and be like, this is just enough. <laughs> I've reached my limit of it being enough. That's all I can say. I've, for me, personally, I've reached my limit of it being enough. And the more I see, it's just the more I get. I dig my heels in that this is the way I have to now live my life. So when I think I've asked some people, you know, when you get those kind of like generic Christian answers, when you ask them, you know, what is it that you cannot live without in this life? And they'll say, oh yeah, I can't live without God. I can't live without the word. And da da da. And it's like, oh, that's like beautiful fairy responses. But it is only when you have now, and I'm saying this so much to myself as well, because literally it, it's, it, in the last couple of weeks it's really hit me um like a like a rushing wind <laughs> to say that you cannot live without god do you really understand what that means so when i ask that question when i talk about fomo you know the fear of missing out there is a point in your life where no longer are you fearful of missing out on the things um, presented to you by this world but you are now fearful of missing out on the things presented to you by the presence of God and it is only those people who have actually been in the presence of God entered the presence of God sat in the presence of God been taught by the Holy Spirit who actually even begin to develop this this spiritual FOMO <laughs> spiritual FOMO like it's it's it, it now is like an addiction in itself your spirit latches on to the presence of God and it does not want to let go and the minute you start to lose that presence it is like oh no <laughs> oh no so not any more is it just oh i'm being tempted by sins of this world it is actually now but you're you will now progress from sins of this world pulling you out but general depletion of energy so imagine just like your phone yeah if your phone you charge your phone it's 100 percent. even if you don't use your phone just standard everyday running apps like your email fetching uh, fetching emails sending emails um and that's without you doing it you know in the background it does different processes so just your phone running everyday apps to just keep your phone on the battery will deplete that is the same spiritually so and i can't i, I did um a quick message on this on sunday and i was just saying you know do do you feel cause it, it was just a bit like I don't know. For me, it was a little bit of a dumb moment, you know. It was like, oh, it's like light bulb. Um, and I just was like, but I haven't really like I didn't think I've necessarily done anything particular, like lusted after something or desired something or did something that would take me out of the presence of God. But like, and then I was like, oh, I just don't feel, you know, like alive. I don't feel excited. I don't feel, you know, full of the spirit things like that and I'm just like why is that God because like I'm not I don't feel like I've done anything in particular um 
And then God was like, yeah, because you kind of have to maintain this um, to be full. There is your your system still uses <laughs> it still uses power. So even if you didn't necessarily engage in something um, sinful, and we will say, okay, so for example, and I'll just would I just use like something simple like alcohol or something. You didn't just because you didn't go and have a drink. <clears throat> maybe there was an opportunity to have a drink, or maybe there was um, a party that you were going to go to or something like that. So in order to now veer you off from certain situations where you might have had a drink or you might have been involved in a situation where you, where you would have been around drink and things like that, your spirit now has had to use some of that energy in order to keep you away from falling into that pit and to veer you off from falling into that pit so you're still using that energy um that you've been building up in the spirit so this is why you constantly are praying you could you constantly have to be in fellowship with god to maintain that being in the presence because now what will happen if you don't maintain that level of strength that you have in you when the bigger challenges come along you'll find that you are now at like 20 percent, and you actually needed maybe 70 and then guess what you're going to take that drink so it's really important for us to don't get lazy in the place of prayer um don't just take it lightly and think, oh, but I fasted um, last week and I had this mighty revelation. And guys, I'm, this is my own testimony even. <laughs> Don't just think, oh, I fasted and yeah, I had this like mighty revelation and wow, like my life has changed. And da -da -da. guys, it doesn't mean, it means jack. <laughs> like it doesn't mean anything because if you don't maintain that new level that you've attained, imagine... And I'm a bit of a gamer, guys. I do like a computer game every now and again. So, <laughs> um, which I'm sure is probably dropping off <laughs> soon enough because it's dropped quite a lot, to be fair. Um, but yeah, every now and that's what I say every now and again. Um, now, imagine a computer game and you go up in levels and you go up in levels. So now, you know, before you're at like, and I, I used to play a lot of, um, uh, what are they called now again um oh my gosh that's really terrible <laughs> like platform games i used to play a lot of platform games and a lot of the time in platform games um and you're going up levels and stuff you will find that the lower levels are really easy to attain so maybe you only need like a hundred points like before you go up into the new level um, then now you're in like, you start now at the level 10 region, you might need like a thousand. So the next 20s, you need like 3,000 to keep going up levels. <clears throat> in the spirit, you have to keep pushing. That's the point I'm trying to make. It isn't, it isn't that it's always just going to be like, oh yeah, I just prayed this one time or I prayed, um, I prayed for one hour this week and I've gone up in, in in stature in the spirit that might have been what was necessary for that particular level but now when you've climbed you now need to keep climbing and it might be like it might be maybe this distance but now it's this distance you have to climb so it isn't don't fool yourself into thinking yeah but last time all I had to do was pray an hour so praying an hour should be sufficient you will find yourself deficient and when the challenges come and the waves are, waves are um, hitting and the wind is blowing, you'll find you're just struggling. And you're like, why am I struggling? But I prayed an hour. And it's like, yeah, you were supposed to pray one hour, five days. <laughs> Perhaps. I'm not saying, don't try and take my, my words as like a doctrine. Like, oh, she said, yeah, five days, one hour. That should be enough. Guys, everybody's diet plan is different in the spirit. But you will need to pray. 
you will need to um and you will need to read your bible you will need to fast like these different things you have to do praise prayer worship read your bible whichever order is is and pattern is given to you by your spirit is what you need but this is why it's so important to be in tune with your spirit um with the holy spirit and understand what it is you need to do at the time um in order to remain and draw strength from the presence of god amen so when i was reading haggai there that was me just as i said just trying to encourage us to actually take a long hard look at ourselves you know the bible a lot of the time people try to think like oh yeah the bible is written by men da, 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 da. um guys It is a Bible collated by men, inspired by God. Very simple. I think it's a very simple concept, but a lot of people <clears throat> fight really hard to fight that. Um, and it's just because they don't want to believe in God. And that's fine. There are people that don't want to believe in God. But the simple fact is it was collated by man written physically by a person and people um but inspired by god and the way you can even uh, i don't want to try and explain this but the the fact that each different book points to the same thing um there's like a constant running theme throughout of christ and the holy spirit that i was just talking to my pastor about like in the last week and i'm just it, it almost made my jaw drop i mean I for me it was just like oh wow okay um it just says the same thing over and over again it's like how is it that people over generations would write about the same thing in so many different ways and have so many different experiences that um echo the same concept and they're all independent people. These aren't all people from the same family. They're not all like friends. And I said, they were over different generations, but somehow the same themes and concepts are running through all of their lives. The same patterns are always visible. And yet still people just argue with, with, the, with the fact that God is even real, let alone um, how God works and operates through man on this earth. Um, it is only those people that really just desire to not see God, that just don't see God. It's very simple um, because it's 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 so easy. <laughs> it's so easy. If you desire and you see, if you desire to see God, you will see God. And if you don't, you won't. It's, it's, uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, but I wanted to give us an example today <clears throat> because I do like, I said, it's, I'm here saying to you like lots of stuff and I don't want you guys to think oh she's a pastor she's not she's not she's not using much scripture so um I'm gonna go into the book of Genesis um if you guys probably yeah seen a lot of my um broadcast by now you should probably know by now that I love the book of Genesis it's it, I, I think literally everything is in Genesis um and that's not me saying that I don't read the whole bible when I say everything's in Genesis I mean as it doesn't matter what I part of the bible I read it's like they will always be like oh and this was mentioned in Genesis but not in the same way but like I was just saying before there's always echoes of the mind of God um, and the plans of God that was all there from Genesis so it's just it's just really fascinating to me so I love <clears throat> the book of Genesis, so many mysteries in there to, um, to unfold. Um, it's just powerful, so powerful. Um, so, something that I wanted to <clears throat> um, put to you guys, and we're talking about, you know, illusions of this world um, that are kind of put before us. And to be honest, they don't actually really amount to anything. Um, we're literally sold a lie um it's like you know when you get that fake you can go and you can buy the the fake designer clothes or you can go and you can buy the fake phone the fake watch or something it breaks down it's poorly made you know it chips at the edges it frays easily um it tears the color washes out in 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 your first wash so many things happen when we we 
get these cheap um, fake versions of um, the real thing. And that's this world. It gives us like cheap highs, things that don't even last very long. Um, everything is geared around instant gratification and short-term happiness and excitement. Um, you smoke that cigarette and it's like <sighs> five minutes of like, you know, I feel relaxed or sex and it's like, guys, whatever, don't know how long you guys are at it for, but it cannot last forever. <laughs> let's, uh, let's be real about it. Um, doesn't matter how great and how, how much stamina you have, you cannot do that forever and you cannot get the, um, the high from the endorphins forever. Um, they do wear off. So, um, yeah, however, whoever wants to be like, oh yeah, but <laughs> fine. Fine, but it won't last forever. It doesn't last forever if you're really honest with yourself. Um, when you go, and even people who might be like, I'm addicted to food. Guys, I love food. <laughs> I'm looking like, I love food. Um, and there might be stuff I'm really looking forward to eating. Someone's gonna take me to dinner to this place I've been waiting to go to for time, but I eat it and it's like, oh, that was really, really nice. A few hours later, what's going on with the food it's literally coming out the other end guys so it it just satisfied me momentarily um nothing in this world is designed to last it is just designed to cover up to distract or to dull our spiritual senses it heightens our physical um sensations excites us physically in a moment for a moment for a time but it does not last um, and that is why it is just a deception but i'll put to you that the presence of god is eternal and the reason that the presence of god is eternal is because think about it this world which is void of god and void of the spirit produces things that are therefore of this world and void of the spirit so they are limited to time space and matter therefore they cannot last forever because the world spins on its axis for 24 hours it is in time everything that now is produced by this world is subject to being in time within that 24 hour space it might as i said it might last five minutes it might last two hours it might last five ten it might even last days your excitement or whatever sensation that you've gotten from that thing but it is limited to time god is eternal he dwells outside of time so because he is outside of time and we are connected to him by the spirit any status change that we now go through based on being in his presence is eternal it doesn't have a time span because where it is coming from the source is outside of time which means for the whole span of our lives if we can first get into the presence of God maintain being in the presence of God we can actually have a lifetime of peace we can have a lifetime of happiness. We can have a lifetime of joy, a lifetime of prosperity because it is not limited to the 24 hours in our world cycle. It is not limited to time, space and matter. Everything is spiritual and everything that is, even, that is physical manifested first from the spiritual. It was created first in the spirit and then made physical. So any potential here in the physical but had its parenthood its first creation in the spirit so the spirit can it is greater and has is unlimited in comparison to what is in this world so my desire is that anyone and everyone has access to what the spirit has to offer because i said what's in the physical it doesn't last it's all very short term what is in the spirit is eternal 
and I want you guys to have eternal happiness. I want you guys to have eternal joy, eternal peace, eternal prosperity. Not this funny world that's like, we can't even know if there's like, is there ever gonna be an end to oppression? Is there ever gonna be an end to fear? Is there ever gonna be an end to, to slavery? Is there ever gonna be an end to child abuse? Um, nothing, <laughs> those seem to be the only things that are consistent in this world. <laughs> that's what's so funny. Those are the things that are consistent. They're always like at the end of the day. There's always murderers. <laughs> There's always oppressors. <laughs> but why can never one why can no one ever just be happy forever? Even people who now claim to be happy, their lives were probably uh uh in the beginning, they weren't like that. Um or they went from being happy to desperately sad. I think so many times we hear about celebrities and just, you'll ask them, you know, are you even happy now? And you've got all this money, all this fame, all this other, and it's like, no, they're lonely, they're miserable. Money didn't buy them what they thought it would buy them. But with God, the promises of God, in the promises of God lies that true happiness. And that's what I'm gonna go in Genesis. I'm gonna, we're gonna take a little, I love a good case study. You guys should know me by now. I do love a little case study. Um, we're gonna take a little look and we're gonna compare um, two people in Genesis and that is Lot and Abraham. And I'm gonna use Abram instead of Abraham, we might even think we jump between two, but at the time in this part of Genesis, he was Abram. He did not yet have his new name of Abraham. So if you have got your Bibles with you, um, please do go to the book of Genesis. Um, and we're gonna go to chapter, we're gonna start in chapter 13. And so we're gonna look at a little case study of someone who went to build a life for themselves um, based on what they saw. Um, and it didn't quite work out um, probably as they planned. Um, and then we're going to look at a person who went and lived their life according to what God had shown them. And we were. If you guys know Abraham, you know how that turned out. Um, he is the father of faith. Through him was um, the lineage of Christ. Um, so the promise of to Abraham was through you all the nations will be blessed. And that certainly did happen. We got Christ. <laughs> so um for abraham it was a success story um spoiler alert spoiler alert sorry i um, should have said that before but yeah <laughs> that's the spoiler for that but yeah so um we're gonna have a little look at abraham and lot um so yeah please do if you have got your bibles just read along with me i'm gonna start in uh chapter 13 and i'm gonna start from verse 10 but just to give you a little bit of a backstory, Abraham um, carried Lot along on his um, journey when God had said, you know, come out of your father's house and, you know, go to a land that I will show you. Um, a, a lot now travelled with Abraham. So a lot was travelling with Abraham. Now they had wandered around Egypt for a little bit, gone from place to place. Abraham had now come back to one of his original settlements um, from in Genesis 12 in order to get some further instruction. Came back to God and was like, mm, God, you know, what are you saying? Um, and this is what's really important for us. So if you've heard my message on, um, I think it was back in October, um, I was speaking about success by way of the altar. I used Abraham as an example because he always built altars and he lived by um, the altar. He always went to go and seek instruction and offer his, his life and his journey to God. He always sought fellowship with God. Um, and so that was kind of an example for us in our lives. Um, and as I said before, Abraham was the, is the father of faith. Um, so he's definitely someone to pay attention to when thinking, how do I operate as a person of faith? Have a look at our father, Abraham. 
so um so yeah abraham returned to the place where he first built an altar and there he called on the name of the lord just as he did in genesis 12 8 called on the name of the lord so because him and lot were now um they had grown in their wealth so bear in mind abraham wasn't poor he uh, financial security was not his issue um and clearly that wasn't the same for lot either they both were doing they were both affluent characters um that actually brought an issue because now they were too big uh, in their households in terms of their possessions but now too great for the land in which they were inhabiting something had to something had to happen here um <clears throat> so abraham called on the name of the lord there was some quarreling um between the herdsmen and um Abraham now said to Lot, I'm in verse 8, Abraham said to Lot, let's not have any quarrelling between you and me or between your herdsmen and mine, for we are close relatives. Is not the whole land before you? Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Seems reasonable. Lot now says to, Lot replies now to um, Abram, or in Lot's reply, in, he, this is now Lot's part, in verse 10, Lot looked around and saw. Now, I underlined, actually, I highlighted Lot looked around and saw. I've highlighted that. And the reason I've highlighted it is because I thought to myself, I've heard that before. Someone looking and seeing. And I looked at another translation, NLT, and I, it says... Um, Lot looked hard. You know, he searched. He really gave attention to looking. And he saw something. He saw something. He, he landed on a verdict of what was before him. Let's take a quick look at who else looked and saw. And I'm still in Genesis. Um, Genesis 3, um, verse 6. And we're here um, with Adam and Eve. This is Eve's part. It's Eve's uh, grand debut. <laughs> um, Genesis 3, verse 6. And so this is after the devil has been speaking to Eve. He's been having a great conversation with her about, um, did God say surely that you would die if you ate the fruit? Verse six, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it now what i got from verse six there when the woman saw so for it to now detail to us when it means that there is some there's been conversation going on so some people might just read that part in um i think chapter chapter three um from verse one to six some people might just think oh gosh yeah that was just a short conversation like eve just fell so hot like that was just easy the devil just got her like super super quick but this was an ongoing conversation guys don't think that and if you if you guys are really <clears throat> honest with yourself i'm going to even speak to like i guess the christian people who i would imagine are somewhat um the word to use um you guys might already be open to the fact that the devil comes to steal kill and destroy and he, he waits at your door um waiting to have you know waiting to to lure you to sin um you might actually accept that idea already 
So you will know from your own personal experience, did the devil just come once? No, he really didn't. And I've said so many times before, when Jesus went into the wilderness and he was tested by the devil, it says at the end in the in the Luke's account, it says at the end, I believe it's Luke's account, um, it says, and the devil went away until an opportune time. The devil does not give up. And the minute that you really start to take the devil for a fool and make out that he it's just a one-time deal kind of guy, you will find yourself in bother and you'll find yourself in trouble. He is so persistent, it's unbelievable. And as I said before, if you look at the world around you, even in the fact that we have TV adverts, when you're watching um, a film on like terrestrial TV, and some countries are worse than others for TV adverts, if you're watching something on terrestrial TV and you go to ad break. Does it go to ad break once? Just maybe halfway through the film? Or does it maybe ad advertise just at the beginning of the film? Like, you know, before the film starts and then after the film, like in between each program? No, it advertises probably minimum of three times during the film. And you'll probably have about three to five minutes of TV adverts. And each advert is probably about 30 to 60 seconds long. It's a lot of advertising, guys. And if advertising had no value in our society, why the hell is it there? Like, has anyone, I don't know if anyone ever asked themselves these questions. I, re, I ask myself these questions all the time. And I'm just kind of like, that makes sense though. Because if within our own human minds and our own, you know, what we can comprehend, We've managed to work out that human minds are actually susceptible to being influenced. Hence, we've developed TV adverts. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? This is so interesting. Where did that come from? And then we'll look at scripture and we'll look here at, at the devil. The guy has, he's got his whole agenda and he's just whispering. But have you considered this? Maybe it should, maybe this doesn't taste bad. Maybe it's good for this. Maybe you would benefit from this. Is he not advertising something to her? He's advertising an alternative way of thinking outside of what God had intended for her and for Adam and for mankind. Advertising has been there from the Garden of Eden. <laughs> So we would be, again, naive to tell ourselves that man is not susceptible to advertisements and we are not susceptible to being influenced. But unfortunately, a lot of people are very proud and a lot of people are very arrogant and they, don't, they do not want to accept that they can be influenced to do anything they believe everything is their own decision and that's what that's that's what the devil always hopes to do because he makes you take a position where you are now convicted in the decision that you've made so yes i just wanted to just stroll stroll there to genesis 3 and just have a look at when someone looks and sees now that would give us an idea if we're not going to go back to we're now going to go back to chapter 13 and we're going to have a look we're going to read on and i'll jump back a little bit in kind of what i'm saying but yeah we'll, we'll read on for now so lot looked around and he saw that the whole plain of the jordan towards zor or zoar was well watered like the garden of the lord like the land of egypt now we're just going to break again. Because I read this and I was like, wait, but this is law. The only people, people in the garden was Adam and Eve. Lot wasn't there. So how did Lot look at the land and see it was like the garden of the Lord? I was like, that can't be right. Because Lot wasn't born. He's quite a few generations down the line. And I was like, hmm. Okay. 
okay, maybe he's seeing something or heard something that has told him this is like the garden of the Lord because he's not seen it with his own eyes. That means he's not looking with his own eyes. He's looking with someone else's eyes. And who else was in the garden? Because it wasn't Abraham. Abraham wasn't in the garden either. The only other person, creature, spirit in the garden was the devil. <laughs> so for Lot to look at the land and be like, mm, yeah, this looks like the garden of the Lord. And then another NLT translation will say, um, like the garden of the Lord, like the beautiful land of Egypt. So the verdict now of the land of Egypt was that it was beautiful and that it likened to the garden of Eden. And then I was like, hmm. That makes sense because that means the blueprint, the original blueprint of what the garden looked like was now misappropriated, manufactured in the form of Egypt. And it's like, ah, oh, the devil's work. Because that's what he does. He takes the things of the kingdom and he makes a fake version and he uses the fake version to entice man away from the spiritual version so it's like no longer do we desire the original um the pure version it's like yeah well i can have the knockoff so you know it's cheaper it's, it's easier to obtain i don't have to work as hard um so yeah let me go for that version so right now, um, Lot has chosen, he's opted, opted in to go for the cheap knockoff of the Garden of Eden. Instead of like, oh no, yeah, we need to kind of, I want to get back to God. Um, I'll just take, I'll take this one. So, and I mean, he's seen Egypt, because if you go into verse, if you're in chapter 12, um, Lot was traveling, Lot was traveling with Abraham. Um, at the time so they went to Egypt they did live in Egypt so he's seen Egypt with his own physical eyes but to be able to liken it to the garden of the Lord I was like mm, how would you be able to make that comparison unless someone has shown you what that looked like um so I just thought <coughs> oh my gosh excuse me I thought that was very 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 interesting wanted to share that with you guys um we'll go forward in two verse 11 so lot chose for himself the whole plain of the jordan and set out towards the east so again just like um eve now she made a choice for herself she saw something and she made a choice the devil has done exactly what he desired he presented his advert and he was like mm, i think you should what do you think of this one this looks good and lot made his decision and uh he chose for himself so now you can't really be saved from choices that you make for yourself because you've consciously walked into um something that you didn't you didn't get from god you've made a choice to actually embark on something without consulting or fellowshipping with God. Ab Abraham did, because we saw he went back to his altar and he called on the name of the Lord. But Lot made his choice and he's just like, yep, I've now chosen. I think this looks really, really good. And if you guys know the story of Lot, we're going to get there. I'm going to try and, I'm going to try and like wrap it up because um, I don't want to stay on here too long. But the... If you know the story of Lot, it looked like the garden of the Lord. It looked like the beautiful land of Egypt. So what went wrong? 
just to, before I, before I jump ahead, actually no, I'll jump ahead, what went wrong? I'll jump ahead to what went wrong. Um, first thing, verse 14 now, in chapter 14, sorry. There was now some war in the land and um, because Ab Ab Abraham now went in a different direction and I'll get back to that. But there was now war in the land in where the area that Lot went to and um, to the point where he actually, him and his possessions were actually captured <laughs> as spoils of war. Um, Abraham had to now go to the rescue. So that's already part of the error of Lot and many people in today's world, things look really enticing. Things look like, oh my God, it's my dream job. Oh my gosh, I've always wanted this car. You know people that get like really fast like supercars and then they end up wrapping it around a tree? Hopefully not fatally, but there has been cases. And it's like, why is it? <laughs> why is it that we cannot desire things that actually benefit our lives? Why is it we have the things that we really burn for? naturally burn for are those things that are just like they just derail our lives i'm just sometimes you know sometimes i just as i sometimes just ask myself this question guys and i'm really here just trying to encourage you guys to also ask the same kind of questions because i think we spend a lot of time not asking ourselves certain questions because the truth is really hard to swallow um and when we just because the moment that we actually are honest with ourselves and be like oh yeah that's really true and then we actually now have to make the conscious decision to actually not do certain things and to say no to certain things because we can accept that perhaps, even though it looks like it's really good, it's actually really bad. So yeah, Lot was captured. He was captured. Um, it became a spoil of war. Abraham went to go and free him. Um, Abraham did this, he was successful. Um, you can please read 14, the um, chapter 14. It will detail to you the battle and how Abraham just, yeah. <laughs> Exemplified himself. <laughs> 318 men. And uh, they took out like five kingdoms worth of uh, <laughs> war, took all the spoils and only gave it, sowed a tenth and it gave everything back. So anyway, um, now if we skip forward to after um, he rescued Lot from captivity um, and we go to verse 18, chapter 18, um, just the end of chapter 18 now, um, the Lord appears to Abraham and he doesn't say to Abraham, um, oh, by the way, you know, we're going to, we want to save Lot. He just said, oh, by the way, we're going to destroy Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah because of the, you know, their sin is so great um, and grievous. So God now wanted to destroy it. But Ab Abraham knew that Lot obviously was down there. So he's like, oh, you know, he pleaded, he pleaded a case. And yeah, God said, you know, if, even if there's 10, um, even if there's 10, that he will, um, he will not destroy the city. Um, no, there wasn't even 10, to be honest. There actually wasn't 10, because Lot and his family were only, what, four. Um, and even if you had included his, his sons-in-law, who chose not to go, um, that would have even been six. So, yeah. <laughs> it, it was going to get destroyed. Um, so, now, um, that's, that's chapter 18. Now in chapter 19, we now hear about when the angels now went to, to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and they told um, Lot and his wife and, you know, he told Lot, gather up your family and um, get out of here. You know, we wanna, we wanna destroy the place and yeah, we, you, you upon you as uh, mercy has been found. So, um, and that's obviously as a result of the pleading of Abraham to save anyone 
um, that it is found to be righteous in that city. Um, so they were led away from the city and they were told, you know, do not look back. And if you've seen on the flyer for today, I'd said, do not look back. And the reason I put that there is because if any of you again are familiar with the story of Lot, um, you will know that as they were fleeing, they were told, don't look back. And the wife looked back. And if you know of the scripture, um, from um, when Christ was, was speaking to his disciples and he said, you know, um, those that cling to their life will lose it. Um, that was that scripture. Um, Lot's wife, she looked back at the life that she once had. She clearly didn't have an issue with it she was like she was fine she was curious she was like oh what, you know what's going on there like the, the life behind me was so whether you just felt it was normal um i think so many people nowadays we everything has been normalized so the fact that you will see um or the fact that they'll, they'll just people will be drinking on the street for example or there's alcohol sold in all the shops, supermarkets, you know, it's just, everything's normal. Cigarettes, normal. Drugs, normal. Um, sexual sin, normal. Uh, brothels, normal. Um, mass nudity on social media, normal. Everything is normal. So now when it comes to time, to leave that life and you know we all heard scripture romans 12 um do not conform to the ways of this world but be renewed and be transformed by the renewing of your mind it's like oh this is really hard because i have known this life forever now i had a little look in scripture and i couldn't see where lot's wife came into it until he was actually in sodom and gomorrah so my understanding is that he actually married whilst in sodom and gomorrah this is where he actually had children and his children grew up like this his life was in Sodom and Gomorrah so for his wife I can see it must have been difficult because for her this was normal she grew up around grievous sin and to now be told oh this is this is wrong this is bad you must leave it behind and never look back it was kind of like but this is normal I've known what am I going to do with my life done this forever this is all i know and so she looked back and what happened when she looked back she turned to a pillar of salt she turned to a pillar of salt so those who cling to their life will lose it it's just literally like a physical a physical example of that scripture that scripture is a lot more it, that scripture is spiritual based um because I'm not telling you guys that you're physically going to turn to a pillar of salt. Not per se. Anything is possible in the kings of God. <laughs> but I'm not here to tell you that you're going to turn to a pillar of salt. I'm telling you um, to consider um, the life that you live now. And just, just be honest with yourselves. I mean, I'm, that's, I'm just literally just want you guys to just understand how easy it is to steer your life into error when you use your own the mindset that you have been sold from childhood it's so easy to land yourself in error um and so i kind of just want you to start asking yourself certain questions now so you don't end up there in like 30 years time and just be like oh so if I didn't do that thing, maybe I shouldn't have held those drugs. Maybe I shouldn't have sold those drugs. Maybe I shouldn't have slept with that guy. Um, maybe I shouldn't have touched that girl. Um, so many things that we have been made to believe are normal. I don't want you to end up in 20, 30 years time and realize and have to search for where it all went wrong. Lot 
didn't just go wrong when he chose Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, I, per I think Lot was already having conversations on the wrong side of the coin. Not gonna lie to you. That's what I already believe. Um, and it's just now, because for him to now be having that level of conversation at that point when Abraham said, let's go our separate ways, he already just looked and he saw and it was boom. He went and chose for himself. Um, now Lot's troubles didn't end there with his wife dying. For those of you that will know, Lot then, at first he tried to choose a little, um, he tried to go into Zohar, um, but he didn't like it there. He felt too scared, <clears throat> too, too close to Sodom and Gomorrah. So he went up into the mountains where he was originally told to go. So he went up into, into mountains and um, he was the victim of rape. He was the victim of rape. His daughters were like, oh, well, there's no men up here in the mountain. So let's get our dad drunk and we'll have sex with him. And then we will have children of our own so that we can continue the bloodline. And it's like, okay. So you were raped by your daughters <laughs> and then you, what, raised your grandson, grandsons or grandson sons? I don't know. You then raise them. <laughs> Victim of incestual rape. That was that was the end of Lot. That was the end of Lot. Um, but the land looked like the garden of the Lord. The beautiful land of Egypt. And it ended up with him as a victim of incestual rape. Not to say again, I mean, people can try and take me literally and be like, oh yeah, you mean you're saying that this is gonna end like that? I'm not saying your life's gonna end exactly like that. Um, I really hope people don't try to take scripture that literally, um, and but take the lesson that when we use our eyes to assess um, and discern between what is good and what is right for our lives, more often, I say more often than not all the time, you will find that it is not as it seems. And the outcome will often be different to what was actually sold to you in the first place. For, for Lot, it was extremely different. Like it was light and, you know, light and dark, night and day. Um, he saw a garden, <laughs> like the Garden of Eden. And he ended up with um, what ashes, in Sodom and Gomorrah, in the mountain top, being raped by his daughters. Very different, very different outcome. And the guy had goats, he had, you know, he had herds and, and, and flocks. He was doing all right for himself. He was actually doing all right for himself. But he chose for himself at that point and he ended up in a, in a pretty sticky situation. So I said to you, I was gonna use, um, the, you know, the opposite, and that was Abraham, to, um, I said at the beginning as well, anyway, Abraham, I really do hope, because I, I want to wrap up now, guys, I really do hope that you guys are at least, and this is not even just the Christian people who might be watching, this is anyone who might be watching will know enough just from hearsay about the story of Abraham and how Abraham is the father of faith and how the lineage of Christ came through Abraham. So when the promise that Abraham was made that through you all nations will be blessed, it was the promise of Christ. I'm really like that's just very foundation 101. Um that was the promise to Abraham. That was nation that was the end of Abraham. Um but in that time, Abraham himself was also very blessed. He also was given a son um when he was 99 years old. Um Sarah, his wife, was barren. God made her fertile. And he, even though Abraham himself was physically of an age where it's like, okay, the guy's on the edge, um, he was also, he was able to bear a child. And that, that's the glory of God, to make the impossible possible. 
Um, and that's what he wanted to prove to Abraham, that he can do the impossible. Um, but going back to verse, to chapter 13, sorry. Um, when Lot now went his way, you will see in verse 14, the Lord said to Abram after Lot had parted. Verse 17, go walk through the length breadth of the land for I am giving it to you. He, he gave instruction to Ab Abraham on where to go. It wasn't Lot, to Abraham didn't choose for himself. I'm just, I just want you to literally see the difference, the opposite there. Abraham didn't choose for himself. God chose for him and he went. He actually even went to seek God because that's when back in chapter 13, um, and it says he went back to the place where he first built an altar and called on the name of the Lord. Abraham actually sought God's advice. Abraham wanted to know, God, what next? Where am I going next? What's up? And God came and gave him instruction, but he gave it only to Abraham after Lot had left. And I just wanted to quickly draw your attention to something before I'm going to pray for you guys. Back in verse, um, oh, should I say in verse 12? Yeah, verse 12, begin of verse 12, um, chapter, what, chapter 12, sorry, verse 1. The Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. At this point, Abram actually, I don't know, and I think sometimes we're a bit guilty of this. We don't follow instruction very well. Um, Lot was actually a part of Abraham's father's household. He wasn't supposed to go, but, um, verse four, so Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Why? Skip forward to verse, uh, verse five. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew, Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people had acquired in Haran. Why? I was just like, but Ab Abram, like, God said, leave your father's household. Why did you go and take Lot with you? And I think, to be honest, I think we do this a lot. I haven't, I'm not, so I'm not sitting here saying, you know, I've, I've drawn a conclusion as to why Lot, why Abraham took Lot. Was it just that Lot was like, oh, let me come along? You know, I, I don't have an answer to that at this point. That's literally just something that came to me as I was just reading. I'm just like, oh, but God said, leave everything. <laughs> and you took, obviously his wife, Sarai and his possessions are his. Um, but Lot was a part of his father's household and God told him don't, to leave them all behind. But in his own wisdom, he decided to take Lot with him. Um, and I was just like, hmm, it's interesting. And it wasn't until a bit of, I say a bit of perambulating, because you'll see in chapter 13, so Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had and Lot went with him. So Lot's still there. Abram had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. So Abraham actually, it's almost like Abram went to kind of like build a little bit of his life for himself. He was kind of functioning quite, I say, well on his own, you know. So you'd think, oh, Abraham was doing really well. You know, he's really successful. And this is from the Negev, he went from place to place until he came to Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Ai, where his tent had been earlier and where he had first built an altar. So when this is like, so he went from place to place. It's like he was like searching now. You know, he's a bit lost. Why are you going from place to place? Um, it's like he needed a bit of direction. So he came back to the place where he first built an altar, called on the name of the Lord. And oh, guess what? Now, Lot buggers off and God comes and speaks to him and gives him some more direction. Just a bit, just something to think about. It's just something for us to think about. Maybe when we're feeling a little bit lost in life and we're feeling like we're just, 
being blown here and there by the wind. The rain is beating down on the houses that we built for ourselves and we just think, I need some direction. I don't know which way to turn. I'm feeling a little bit lost. Perhaps, perhaps it's time to call on the name of the Lord. Seek his help, seek his guidance, seek his direction. We saw what happened and Lot chose a life for himself. It looked so promising. The land was well watered. It looked like the garden of the Lord, like the beautiful land of Egypt. He was swept into captivity. His family decimated, his sons-in-law burnt to cinders his wife pillar of salt and he was a victim now of incestual rape really didn't turn out as he planned but he chose for himself so what can God do when you tie his hands by dismissing rejecting his input in your life at that point when Lot was captured, he's outside of the protection of God because he isn't traveling with Abraham anymore. Abraham is protected because Abraham is under covenant. But he now stepped outside of the covering of Abraham and his life just fell apart. The presence of God is our strength it is our safety it is how we navigate through the twists and turns and the um, hills and valleys of this world um, when we look on a situation we don't look on it with our own eyes we don't look on it with eyes that have been influenced by generations and generations of ancient carnal wisdom to decide if something is good or bad. We take on and seek the verdict of God in order to choose right. That's the examples I wanted to show you. Stop running through life on your own steam, on your own strength, by your own understanding. Our wisdom is foolish before God. When will we wake up to that fact and realize we can never know more than the one who knows all? Lean on God today and live a life, a real life of prosperity. And that's not just financial prosperity. I know that word prosperity gets used so much. Um, be happy. I'm just, I just wish people would just want to be happy. But... It's like they're just so used to putting band-aids over things and put masks on and uh, like a clown, you know, you like you literally paint a smiley face on your face and just like, I'm happy, but you know, you're just crying at the same time. You have a black hole in your heart every morning that you desperately seek to fill. Just seek God, he fills it up. He will fill you. Um, to overflow in. Don't rely on your own strength anymore. Don't be alone anymore. I pray that from tonight, you begin to take heed of the words spoken 
and examine, begin to examine your life under a new light, a fresh pair of eyes, start again. There's nothing wrong with starting again. It is best to start again now than wait uh, till you're 80 and knocking on the door of death and to be like, ah, oh, I should have started again. There's no time like the present. The Lord made the day today. <laughs> today, if you hear my voice, do not be like, do not be like the Israelites. With stiff necks, wandering in the desert for 40 years. Take the help of God. If you've heard his voice, seek and run after it. You'll find him. You will find him. I pray that God gives you strength today. Strength to start examining your life. The strength to face those challenges that you've just been putting aside for so long. So many of you, I know, I know that you have just been waiting to start again. God's been waiting for you to start again as well. Don't delay anymore. The time is now, the time, the day is today. God is waiting to welcome you home. In the name of Jesus, I pray you have strength to face those challenges. Open those doors, those closets where you've locked that stuff away. Clean house. It's, this, it's December tomorrow. People will have to live by the... Um, by the... Uh, the, the seasons of this world and like, oh yeah, spring cleaning is only for like, um, for like April, March and April. <laughs> no, 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 no. Spring cleaning is now. <laughs> it's time to clean house, guys. It's time to clean house. All those cobwebs and shadows that lurk in the corners, God is waiting to fill your house with light. Why wait till April? Today is today. The time is now. God is waiting. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray for you that the light of God fills your house and shines from every window. Like a house set upon a hill. Become a light to the world. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me this evening. God bless you. Um, I believe that someone was blessed. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to be speaking about on Wednesday, um, but I do hope that you will join me um, for a witness session, witness Wednesday session, just to mix up the week, get you guys thinking about God. Um, again, because as this week, as this world does, it will keep throwing things at you. Um, so stay strong in the Lord, stay strong in the word, stay strong in prayer. Amen. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, please enjoy the rest of your evening and, um, yeah, I hope to see you on Wednesday. God bless. Bye.